Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT, Conflict Resolution. This is Lecture A, Definitions of Conflict. The objectives for this lecture, Definitions of Conflict, are to define conflict, explore the historical views of conflict, explore how conflict can be both a positive or negative force for group performance. There are a variety of definitions and meanings associated with the concept of conflict. However, in general, there are two conditions and themes associated with it. First, conflict must be perceived by the individuals that are party to it. If conflict is not perceived, then a situation will not be viewed as a conflicting one, although other individuals associated with the situation may very much see it as such. Second, Conflict almost always entails social interactions combined with some level of disagreement and an inability to get along. There's a saying, you can't have an omelet without breaking a few eggs. Conflict is a naturally occurring phenomenon resulting from human interaction and is especially prevalent in healthcare settings. Healthcare workplaces are considered high conflict environments. Some of the features of healthcare that lead to high conflict environments include high levels of stress and emotion, limited resources, intense competition, mergers, heavy regulation, demands of numerous stakeholders, and cultural and diversity concerns. How individuals and organizations view conflict has evolved since the early 1930s through three distinct phases or views. These are the traditional view, the human relations view, and the interactionist view. Let's take a look at each of these more closely. The traditional view existed during the 1930s and 1940s and saw conflict as being destructive and something to be avoided. Conflict was associated with violence, destruction, and irrationality in order to emphasize its harmful implications. Conflict was viewed as deriving from an absence of trust, poor communication, and the inability of managers to be responsive to their employees' needs. Although this traditional view of conflict is old-fashioned, many people continue to think of conflict according to this outdated view. In contrast, the human relations view suggested that conflict was an unavoidable and normal part of all groups and workplaces. As such, it could not be eradicated and could actually be helpful in improving group performance. Workplaces, it was thought, could become so accommodating and agreeable, they could become stagnant and indifferent to required change and innovation. This theory of conflict was popular from the 1940s through the 1970s. And finally, we come to the interactionist view of conflict, which not only accepts conflict as an inevitable part of groups and work environments, but is supportive of a continuing nominal amount of conflict to keep work groups self-critical, inventive, and imaginative. Although the interactionist view proposes that certain types of conflict are supportive of group goals and performance, it does not suggest that all conflict is good. Those types of conflicts that lead to improved group functioning and support group goals are positive or constructive forms of conflict. Alternatively, those forms of conflict that obstruct group goals or performance can be considered destructive or negative forms of conflict. Positive or constructive conflict can serve as a catalyst for positive change. It can lead to inspired and improved problem solving, higher commitment and motivation, better work products, and higher job satisfaction. Negative or destructive conflict can act as an opposing force by sidetracking efforts to achieve group goals and reducing performance. It can also reduce employees' sense of well-being. If the conflict is sufficiently severe, it can lead to employee resentment and anxiety, 
which can result in poor work outcomes and stress. Rampant negative conflict can result in cultures that do not uphold helpful and trusting interpersonal relationships. Such cultures, when present in healthcare settings, can be detrimental to patients. What are the various types of conflict? To assist us in differentiating good and positive conflicts from bad and negative conflicts, let's break conflict down into three sections, relationship conflict, process conflict, and task conflict. Relationship conflict relates to interpersonal relationships. Process conflict occurs in reaction to how work is carried out. Task conflict occurs around the content and the objectives of work. Research shows that relationship conflicts are commonly negative. Such conflicts occur due to personality clashes that result in opposition, resentment, and anger, and result in poor interpersonal communication and understanding, which in most cases leads to poor task performance. Conversely, the process of low-process conflict and low-to-average task conflict is often positive and fruitful. Process conflict must remain low to be functional and productive. If high, process conflict generates vagueness about the task to be performed and results in more time to finish work. Task conflict at low to average levels typically improves the work efforts of a group as it motivates members to talk about ideas and options that can improve the group's performance. Kolb and Bartunek present four basic types of conflict as yet another way to conceptualize and classify conflict. Their conceptualization includes the following types of conflict. Goal conflict, cognitive conflict, affective conflict, and procedural conflict. These types of conflict can occur simultaneously and are not mutually exclusive. Let's explore these types of conflict a little more over the next few slides. In goal conflict, we see the incompatibility of two or more goals or outcomes. An HIT example might be where the medical practice has decided to purchase an EHR. The physicians have been through the training on the new system and are ready to begin documenting. The vendor has strongly urged the practice to consider first turning on only the practice management portion of the software to ensure that the disruption to the account's receivable days is minimized. The physicians are outraged. Why did they go to the trouble of being trained and reorganizing their workflow only to be trumped by the billing office? Why can't they both be turned on at the same time? For that matter, why can't the billing office wait and let the physicians begin documenting first? This conflict highlights the conflicting goals of the different groups. Your role as an HIT professional will be to understand why both groups prefer a certain solution and try to find a path that can address all valid concerns. The next type of conflict, cognitive conflict, includes conflict resulting from the incompatibility of thoughts and opinions within a person or among people. For example, if a laboratory department wants its own IT support from a mom-and-pop shop model that they are familiar with, while corporate IT wants a more formal model for efficiency, there is going to be some cognitive dissonance between the two parties. As an HIT professional, you may be seen with suspicion in the above scenario by one or the other party. The third box in this series, Affective Conflict, is the incompatibility of emotions or feelings within a person or among people. It is not uncommon at all in an HIT environment for some team members to have affective conflicts. Oftentimes, a person perceived as abrupt or short with the other team members can evoke emotional responses. For example, while implementing an emergency department tracking system, a particularly vocal physician decried everything to do with the system, including support staff who were there to help. One of the staff declared that they would rather quit than work with that physician ever again. 
To address this issue, the project manager had to assign someone else to manage that physician specifically and keep the emotionally injured staff member distant from that physician. The last type of conflict on this list, procedural conflict, occurs when individuals differ over the procedure for resolving an issue or carrying out an assignment. An example of this would be when one team member immediately involves the team leader to resolve all disputes, while another prefers team members to resolve their own conflicts and only wants the leader involved if the team members cannot agree. This concludes Lecture A of Conflict Resolution. To summarize, in this lecture we defined conflict and traced how ideas of conflict have changed since the early part of the 20th century. We studied how conflict can be a positive force as well as a negative one, and we looked at different types of conflict.